Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, thanks very much for coming in. Uh, is the U.S. on the right path right now to destroy ISIS? I think we are. I don't think we have a choice. I think the way the president uh, laid it out the other night in his address to the American people was quite right. It's not simply a matter of choice. ISIS is very dangerous. They're at least as dangerous as Al-Qaeda was. Al-Qaeda perpetuated the uh, attacks on September 11th. And if we don't destroy ISIS, there'll be attacks on our homeland. There's no, no doubt about that. How long is that going to take to destroy ISIS? Well, I don't know. I'm not a military planner, but I think as long as it takes, we need to do it. We need to have our allies. We need to have Arab allies. This cannot be the United States going into a country again for regime change. Because the U.S. has been trying to destroy Al Qaeda since 9-11. That's 13 years ago. Al Qaeda is still in business in various forms. Core Al Qaeda. Ayman al Zawahiri, the leader of Al Qaeda, he was number two to bin Laden. He's still at large. Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula at large. Al Qaeda in the Maghreb. All of these other offshoots, they're still there. This could take a long time to destroy ISIS. Well, it could. Uh, fighting terrorism takes a long time. Uh, ask Israel. Uh, I don't care whether it's Al Qaeda or ISIS or Hezbollah or Hamas. Uh, they're all terrorists and they want to use terrorism to achieve their political aims. So this aims. is like the war on poverty or the war on, cr uh, the war on drugs. Uh, this is going to go on and on. This three-year notion that the U.S. can destroy ISIS in three years, which the Obama administration has been laying out, that's unrealistic. Is that your assessment? Well, no, I don't know if it's three years or two years or four years. I don't think it matters. I think what matters is that we are, we are going after them. I think the, the public opinion shifted with these beheadings. It shows how brutal they are. They kill people for the wrong religion or even for the right religion, children, women. These are a bad group, and it's not simply a matter of trying to be the world's policemen. I really believe that they pose a direct threat to our homeland, so it's in the American national interest to act. Well, if it's in the American national interest to act, why just with air power, why not go in there on the ground and crush them? Well, because I think Americans are war-weary. I'm war-weary. Well, if it's such a big so. threat, the, the United States has got to do that, right? No, I think as the president orig uh, originally laid it out, I think right now we can start with, with airstrikes and see where it takes us. I mean, they have a real army over there. They're just not a bunch of terrorists mm -hmm. running around. They've got tanks. They've got armored personnel carriers. They've got military officers who were trained, some by Saddam Hussein's regime, some trained by the United States over the past decade. We, the U.S. trained them, armed them, financed them. Sunni Iraqis, they defected because they don't like the Shiite-led regime in Baghdad. They're working with ISIS right now. This is a real army. Yes, it's a real so you army. You can't defeat a real army just by the well, air. Well, I don't think we should get ahead of ourselves. I think we should take these steps, which are very prudent. If we have an international coalition, as the president is trying to do, as Secretary Kerry is trying to do, uh, I think we can defeat them. We do have troops on the ground. We have the Kurds. We have the Iraqis. There may be some more down the line with special forces, but right now, uh, I think we can degrade and destroy uh, ISIS uh, the way the when president When you say special forces, U.S. special forces? Well, I don't know. Because that would be U.S. combat I, uh, boots I on the know. ground. I, I'm not for boots on the ground right now. I, I think that no one's talking about an uh, invasion of Iraq the way we had in 2002 or 2003, reoccupying it. Uh, we are trying to remove a cancer, and as you mentioned, Wolf, they're absolutely uh, formidable. And I think every day of delay is another day that they're there beheading people and doing things. Uh, I think we really need to act. I think it's very compelling. Uh, I, as you know, was for aiding the Free Assyria Army, army uh, uh, two years ago. Uh, I'm glad we're finally going to try to uh, aid uh, the Syrians uh, in Syria because you, you, you cannot go uh, after ISIS just in Iraq. They are also in Syria. But is it too late? Because that Free Syrian Army is pr pretty weak. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't even control much of the area. They got Al Nusra, a terrorist organization. Some elements of the Free Syrian Army are aligned with Al Nusra right now, which is itself fighting ISIS. But that's a spin off of Al Qaeda. You feel comfortable giving weapons to the Free Syrian Army, which could wind up in the hands of Al Nusra? Well, it is late, but better late than never, and we're not so giving weapons. So you do feel comfortable Well, that. we're going to vet them, we're going to train them. It's not simply taking weapons and handing them over to the Free Syria Army. The U.S. vetted the Iraqi army and all the, those weapons, and Mosul, the second largest city in Iraq, are in the hands of ISIS right now. Well, we've made mistakes for sure in the past, and hopefully we're, we're moving along the way we should do in, in, in the future. But you feel comfortable with the president's strategy? Yes, and I, and I think there are very tough choices. None of them are good. The worst choice, in my opinion, would be to do nothing. And I think the president has laid out a very prudent course of action. I support it. Are you and are the chairman of your committee, Ed Royce, on the same page? Well, you'll, you'll have to ask but him. What, based on your conversations with him? 
Well, I think he understands that there's a threat, that, that ISIS is a threat, and uh, America cannot just allow uh, people being beheaded and all kinds of brutality that will affect our homeland. I would assume that his views are similar to mine. But, but if you, I'm just you, trying to get a sense if there's a broad consensus in the House of Representatives. Uh, will you vote for the $500 million to uh, fund uh, the, the moderate Syrian opposition? I absolutely will. Um, you know, we have been trying, Chairman Royce and I and the Foreign Affairs Committee, to run it in the most bipartisan way we can. We pride ourselves that we are the most bipartisan committee in the Congress. Foreign policy needs to be bipartisan. So I think every member's got to do what he or she thinks is best. But for me, it's an easy choice. ISIS has to be stopped. All right, uh, Congressman Elliott Engel, the ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, thanks for coming in. Thank you, Will. The French President Francois Hollande uh, says there's no time.